I had as a background in my childhood war. War and the post-war hunger. I learned how to steal potatoes from the fields, apples from the trees. I learned how to climb the highest trees for the uh, softest leaves to eat, cook them and eat them. This was my background. I had learned survival. The most fateful year in my life, perhaps, was the year 1955. That's when I came to Pakistan, newly married to a Pakistani in Germany. And I thought, well, uh, I'm firmly rooted in my own culture, and, and if I uh, recite some verses from Goethe or play some Mozart music, uh, that would establish me well in Pakistan. Well, uh, I learned a lesson very, very soon. Um, it is not that you bring certain items with you. It is that you make an effort, a real strong effort, to understand people, get their vibes, and that they receive your vibes that uh, a, a glance from the eye tells you what their lips might not want to pronounce, that when they shake their head they mean actually yes. So um, this takes a while, but it doesn't come overnight. But uh, I must say that uh, life here was made easy for me. Uh, my destination was Peshawar, the capital of the then Northwest Frontier Province, now it is called Khaiba uh, Pakhtun uh, they uh, were a lot that was very friendly towards the world. They were hungry to learn about the world. And uh, they accepted me unreservedly and with, with a full open heart. They are such open-hearted people. In uh, 1962, the University of Peshawar, where we lived on the campus, um, employed me as a uh, lecturer in German and uh, there too I must say it was not difficult though teaching was a new thing for me I was trained as a physiotherapist uh, but uh, I prepared very thoroughly and uh, partially I realized well all my preparation may not be so useful because it is considered one-sided it uh, implies the Western way of thinking and learning and German is a very grammatical language so I started teaching everything from the grammatical per perspective then I realized this was uh, not the ideal way for them but I also learned that people have an excellent memory their memory is fantastic so I started teaching sentences where the, the, the grammatical endings are incorporated in the speech and that worked very well. Other things that were perhaps not so beautiful. Uh, one thing is that uh, the Peshawar University campus was very large but had no trees. And I was born and bred in an area of Berlin which is it's called Green Forest. It, I was practically born under by, uh, pine trees. So I miss trees very much. Particularly since I suffered badly from the climate. Uh, the summers with 45 degrees uh, were more than torturous for me and I did fall sick also. But um, in the summers then we went uh, during the university holidays uh, to the hill stations in the Himalayas which are very beautiful and green and cool and there I could always recover somewhat. Uh, then the food, the spices 
very torture for me. I, I, I couldn't even stand the smell of them. From a distance I could smell this and that uh, spice and my stomach turned. But um, it took years of uh, feeling now the smells are no more so bad at all. And maybe four or five years later, I enjoyed eating the heavily spiced uh, curries and achars and chutneys. And uh, I, I love the Pakistani food since then, though I've never learned how to cook them. Yes, that was another a real culture shock for me. Uh, my husband was the director of sports at the university, and we were given one of their bungalows. So it was all right, two, three bedrooms and very simple but large gardens. And um, then I was taken to the kitchen and I couldn't find the kitchen. I said, no, here is something black, but where is the kitchen? And that was supposed to be the kitchen. Um, the, uh, there was a, a platform a foot high from the ground which had uh, open uh, holes and that was the cooking range. You put the pots over the holes. The pots never had handles. You ha had to pe take a, an edge of your dress to touch them because it was uh, uh, fuel um, wood fired and everything was very hot. So uh, I refused to work in this hole and luckily uh, we had a servant, as everyone has here, and I was relieved of, of that. Another problem was the language. The main language spoken here is Urdu, but the Patans speak Pashto. And in the university, uh, every colleague, every professor, every teacher uh, speaks English anyway. So English was my priority. I had my school years of English and I had no problem with English. Um, then I took it easy. I have two beautiful daughters. When they went to school, they started having secrets from me. And I thought, no, this is too much. So I, then with them I started learning the alphabet and a bit of reading and writing and the language as such. And I can communicate quite all right with most people unless it comes to say philosophical or technical discussions. But I learned unless you speak the language of the country where you want to live, really live, um, you have to know the language. I have had a friend, the late Professor Anne-Marie Schimmel, a very dear and close friend whom I revered. She was here 40, 50, 40 times in Pakistan. She is the, uh, was the professor for Indo-Muslim culture at Harvard University, uh, Massachusetts. And she writes about me in, in her foreword, um, having lived in Pakistan for some 40 years, this is now 20 years ago that she wrote this, Karin Mitman knows and loves it. And critical remarks that she makes are born out of love and deep feeling for the people and their values. Well, yes, values I have learned to respect, though I cannot accept them all. Many values date back to 1400 years and they uh, not only don't work nowadays but they play havoc with the people. People look backwards all the time, they don't look forwards because everything goes backward. Also the system, the um, family system, the young couple or the young man who is the father of kids and a wife whom he has to support. He has to support also his parents and perhaps an ailing sister or a divorced brother or an, a disabled uh, other child, nephew, niece, whatever. They have to look after all of them. So there is no money left for the future, for the future of their own kids. Peak of everything in my life is here my family. I have two gorgeous daughters uh, Salma and uh, Shirin. Uh, Salma 
is working in the German embassy in a very responsible job and she is uh, very dedicated to it and her colleagues, she keeps a wonderful report, she's very sociable and uh, comes and visits me every week and uh, she has got two daughters, one lives in Karachi and the, uh, she's not married. Uh, the elder one is married and has two lovely children, uh, ten months and nearly three years, two, three quarter years. And that gives me a lot of joy and satisfaction. My other daughter, Shireen, she is the firebrand in the family. She uh, uh, has made herself a name in the whole country with her workshops for youth mainly and for her innovative ideas in the corporate sector and um, her lectures at uh, universities. She's all the time on the move. She's more in the air flying than she's on the ground. So um, she also comes and visits here. She's got her house and her family in Karachi. Her husband is a pilot, her son is a pilot, her father-in-law is a pilot. Everyone flies around there. And um, uh, she has two sons. One lives in America as an engineer, and uh, the other is, is a pilot. So I see him also when he comes. They are all wonderful young people. The elder one is married and has also two lovely children, a girl and a boy. And that gives me a lot of uh, peace and satisfaction that uh, all my children children, grandchildren, and now four great-grandchildren are there growing up. They all do their duties in life. They promote in life what is best, what is worth to be promoted. And that makes me very happy. Um, another um, issue that made my life here a bit difficult is the dirt. People litter and dirt everything. The ground, the earth is considered unclean. So anything is thrown. I don't want to go into that in detail, but uh, some areas in, in, in cities is uh, unbearable. You can't walk there. And one more uh, point angers me. That is the bureaucracy. Though I've lived here now, uh, by now, 40, no, 60 years, I'm not allowed to own a car even. I have no car in my name. My daughter, uh, my, the car, my car is in my daughter's name. So is my house. A house I might understand a bit, but that I can't even own a car, that annoys me very much. When I think of the thousands of Pakistanis who live in Germany and get every facility from the state, I find this is a bit of an anomaly. I come back to the better aspects of life. I had the luck to be teaching in the Department of English and Modern European Languages. Right in the beginning of my teaching career, I taught there for 18 years. Um, I contacted the German Embassy because I had no books. I needed something. So they didn't come only with books, but they came with half a truck full, full of books and material and uh, film equipment and library uh, issues and a radiogram and uh, all sorts of things. And the cultural attaché made an agreement with the vice-chancellor that I would take up um, cultural activities along with my teaching job. So that enriched my life enormously. In those days, Germany was a rich country. And one group came after the other, be it magicians or pianists or operas and camera or um, dancers or singers, uh, you name it. Exhibitions, several exhibitions from classical to imperialist paintings. It was such a rich life that um, I dreamed I had dreams that I jumped very high, very long, over several houses before I landed. Very, very happy dreams. My interest has always been culture. And I founded the Pakistan-German Friendship Association. And I ran it for, I think, 18 years or 16 years maybe, which was 
a great success. People even now talk about it. Ah, in those days, there was so much life going on, the cultural performances of, of the PGFA, Pakistan-German Friendship Association, I made, uh, which is my, uh, where I have most beautiful memories, uh, for stage performances. One was the Mozart Festival, where we celebrated Mozart's birth anniversary. And uh, it was a talk show where I, uh, which I designed and uh, made, had made the costumes. Uh, the then ambassador's wife had uh, studied dance, also period dance, and she taught them three Baroque uh, dances, which was of great fascination to everybody. That was very, very happy all. I was fascinated by stones, rocks and stones and I started collecting the beautiful ones and when I came here I was told we are living in the area of which is the largest connected um, area of macrofossils so that became something like uh, my weekend excursion area uh, three hours car ride brought me right into the ravines where, which were studded with fossils, uh, macro fossils. And um, I really satisfied my hunger for fossils there and uh, collected and collected and uh, other people got interested and came with me. We had regular outings there. So I have got one Almara with uh, with minerals and the other uh, with the fossils and every morning when I come into my living room I say good morning to them because I love them I look at them I pick them up I speak to them they are my spiritual extension to the origins of life on earth GTZ partially funded uh, very modestly though um, a family planning project which I had on my mind for a very very long time in fact uh, within a few years of my coming to Pakistan I realized that um, with this population growth this country can never uh, prosper because uh, people grow faster than the means and the and the development can grow so I requested for that and they gave me this for a one-year contract and I chose a village nearby uh, Islamabad some 40 kilometers away 50 kilometers my project was called uh, socio-cultural development for acceptance of family planning because I believe that the dollar cannot develop a country but the development of the mind can create a country. And then I was accused that, oh, you have created no reading material. What is the point there? Number one, so many NGOs create pamphlet after pamphlet after pamphlet, and nobody can read in the villages. So I worked with picture material. This program of mine was very well accepted. Women came in large numbers. And uh, we, in this one year, I had 108 s cases of uh, long-term prevention. I, I just uh, gave away about 10,000 condoms and uh, very few uh, actual sterilizations, which for which we contacted the hospital in, in Atalia. I am very, very grateful to the country and its people that I was given the space in Peshawar to develop myself. I took to writing after I couldn't uh, work anymore. I wrote my autobiography, The Prism. I wrote Culture Shock Pakistan. I wrote Hitler's Children and uh, War Era uh, biography. I translated some of Anna Marie Schimmel's texts. I wrote a, a small volume of uh, poems. Uh, I will be forever grateful to the circumstances of my life that um, in Peshawar, I had the space, the space, not only the physical space, but the mental space was granted me to learn, to absorb, to be accepted, to be happy.